Hey, Brad Lancaster here, author of the books Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond, and the website HarvestingRainwater.com. Uh, I today want to show you a real inexpensive and very effective gray water harvesting system uh, to harvest gray water from your washing machine. And uh, it's awesome because you can reuse that lightly used water that came from your drain of your washing machine. You can reuse it for free irrigation to irrigate trees like this uh, white sapote here for free. <laughs> and uh, it's all gravity fed, so there's no crazy tanks, no pumps, super simple. Um, now I'm gonna change the point of view because the system is in the laundry shack behind me there, okay? So let's turn the camera around. We are in a climate here in Tucson, Arizona, where we can keep our washing machine outside, which makes more room for us uh, inside the houses. So we've got this on the high part of the property, so we can gravity feed the gray water from the washing machine I'm about to show you to these mulched uh, basins full of vegetation and awesome life um, for free. So here we go, we open it up. Here's the washing machine. And right next to the washing machine are multiple drain pipes. Now, you can do this even if you've got a washing machine inside the house. Typically, what you're gonna have inside the house is a drain pipe going to the sewer, okay? Well, we just add a um, number of extra pipes, each directing water to a different part of the landscape and different plantings. And we've actually marked um, each pipe with the, uh, the primary plants that are gonna receive the gray water, we send down that pipe. So every time we do a load of wash, we move the drain hose into the next pipe. And we always go in, in this motion, okay? So that way, the gray water is always distributed to a different point every time we do a load of laundry. That way we never super saturate the soil uh, that is receiving the gray water because we're always moving it around and the soils then stay aerobic meaning full of oxygen rather than anaerobic lacking oxygen which can get stinky this system does not get stinky okay so um, it's super simple that way uh, now the one key thing though is you want to use the appropriate soaps so um, we use oasis laundry detergent um, because uh, it is not toxic to the soil life, nor the plants. And if you go to the Gray Water Harvesting page, my website, I give a lot more info on what's good ab about certain soaps, what's bad about certain soaps and detergents, so you can choose the right ones. Um, and uh, we do not use chlorinated bleach when we're harvesting the gray water, uh, because that's toxic to soil life and plants. If you want a bleach that's not going to hurt your soil life or your plant life, well, we can use hydrogen peroxide bleach, okay? Now, um, if you're gonna use chlorinated bleach, then you could pop up the, the cap here, and for that load of wash that you're using chlorinated bleach, you could send that to the sewer. Now, we've marked in parentheses Santa Cruz River because after water goes down the sewer lines in our community, it ends up in the river. So it's just a little reminder that, hey, you know, why don't we, uh, have life practices that don't harm us, our plants, or our soil life, nor those of the larger community, okay? Um, so I'm gonna put this back here, and it is all ready to go. Let's now show you where um, these pipes discharge. So there's the washing machine and the laundry shack. When we do a load of wash, water goes down the pipe, under the path, and outlets into the basin that freely irrigates the orange tree. Another pipe goes down under the path there and outlets to freely irrigate the white sapote tree. Now I've got a little rule. Um, when I've got higher water use plantings like an, a citrus tree or white sapote, um, I like to first plant the rain and the gray water within water harvesting basins that receive direct rainfall, receive runoff from uh, joining hardscape surfaces like a roof, and gray water from a source such as the laundry. That way, I can irrigate these plants primarily, or even solely if I do it really good, on just rainwater and gray water. I'm not using any 
municipal water, no potable drinking water, okay? I'm just using the free on-site waters. That's what I'm trying to encourage you all to do, because this way we can put more water back into the system than we take out, and we can help uh, enhance our flows of rivers, creeks, springs, and so forth. Okay. So let's uh, get a close-up view of the pipe outletting into these two basins. All right, let's uh, zoom in here. And we have got the gray water coming out of the pipe here into the level, fairly level bottomed mulch basin uh, for the citrus tree. Now the key thing is you want to have at least a two inch drop from the bottom of the pipe until you get the soil or better yet the mulch, top of the mulch. That way there's no way you're going to get a clog because the water can freely drop out. Okay. Um, and the great thing about this system too, having it open like this, it's really easy to see and listen, see if there's any issues and everything is working great here. So the gray water comes on out and it is helping grow this thriving citrus tree. Love it. Let's look at the other pipe. Next to the wash machine, we have got the pipe that's outletting into the basin for the white sapote tree. There is another pipe there that outlets from the outdoor shower. Now, the thing is we want to primarily have a, um, an evergreen plant, at least one, that is the primary recipient of the gray water because the evergreens, well, sorry, the perennials are going to have um, growth and be uptaking water, acting like a living pump um, all the time, okay? In the cold season and the, the warm season. So uh, you can then augment that by planting some annuals as I have here. I just recently uh, planted uh, some broccoli and some kale and uh, that will all work great. I've got a little uh, wild chilti peen growing behind that. Now the thing is, um, some people say, hey, well, you shouldn't be doing gray water to uh, annuals or food plants. No, you absolutely should send it to food plants. The key is you just don't want to send the gray water to the part that you're going to eat raw. Okay, now I'm going to cook the broccoli, I'm going to cook the kale, so no problem sending the gray water to it. And I have the annuals right next to the pipe because they've got smaller root networks, and that way they can access the, the gray water from the pipe because they're really close to it. Whereas the perennial white sapote tree, it's got a much more extensive root system, so its roots can come to the gray water. Whereas the annuals, I put them to the gray water outlet. Get it? And if you're wondering what these things are, they're uh, Oyas. So they're these uh, ceramic pots, the only holes on the top. And I can supplement the irrigation of these systems by putting rainwater via hose from my cisterns um, into that and then cap it off. And it's a subsurface, slow drip irrigation system. Works really good. Now, one thing I want to clarify or correct, um, it is totally fine. In fact, I recommend sending your um, gray water to edible plants, especially perennial plants. And uh, as long as the part of the plant that you eat doesn't come in direct contact with the gray water, um, no, no problem. You can, you can eat it raw. It's just when you have gray water touching the part of the plant you might eat, you know, say like kale or something, that's when you want to cook it before you eat it. All right. Um, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you want to get more information, check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, Volumes 1 and 2, especially Volume 2. I have a whole chapter dedicated to all kinds of really effective, inexpensive, gravity-fed gray water harvesting systems. You know, how to, how to do them from step one to the final step. Uh, and more info on what are good and bad gray water harvesting soaps and detergents. Um, and I've got more information on those uh, subsurface ceramic unglazed uh, irrigation oyas. So um, tons of info. You'll love it. Um, and I show you how, how to plan your system, how to size your system appropriately, and then how to implement it. Uh, rainwater too. And in fact, behind me there, those are my rainwater cisterns off my roof. And so I can use that cistern water as a backup supplementary source to the gray water um, for um, the irrigation of this sapote, the citrus tree, and other goodies. And also be sure to check out my website, harvestingrainwater.com, especially the gray water harvesting page on that website, as we've got a whole lot more info there and more videos and goodies. Okay, hope you've enjoyed it. Check it out and get out there and plant the rain and plant the gray water to grow abundance. Thanks for watching. Hey, there's one thing I forgot. 
<laughs> to get the books, my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands Beyond, please buy them direct from me via my website, harvestingrainwater.com. Because I sell them at deep discount, and that way, if you get them direct from me, no middle person takes a cut, thereby having more resources flow to me, enabling me to create more resources like this for you. All right, thanks for your support.